uh, any, pos any pattern of magnetic, magnetic and electric fields has to obey these four equations. So we're going to try looking at this possible pattern. Let me show you a little program here. I'm going to imagine a region of space, if we can get the picture to show up, a region of space where we have a uniform electric and magnetic field. We say, well, that's not changing. But the region where there is this uniform electric and magnetic field is traveling through space. Okay? Now, this is a little misleading. You might think that the, you know, it looks like the arrows are actually moving. But you can think about there is a changing electric and magnetic field. Because if I run this again, it's essentially going from zero to some uniform value to zero once again. So if I pick, for instance, some particular observation location. Let's say right here, I'm measuring the E and B right here. Right now, E and B are zero, E and B are zero, E and B are zero, E and B are zero. E and B are non-zero for this amount of time, and then they go back to zero again. Okay. So at that particular observation location, there's a change, there was a change in the electric and magnetic fields. And same everywhere else, right? So we can think of this as sort of a, a slab of space, okay? It's uh, this slab of space where there is a, a uniform electric magnetic field is running into and out of the board, okay? So it's extending this way. It's also going up and down, and it's traveling to the right at some speed, okay? So here's, this is the pattern. So you imagine some region where we have electric field, and we've arranged it in its particular way. The electric field is pointing upward in the positive y direction. So that's E. And we have the magnetic field pointing out towards us. That's B in the positive z direction. And we're going to imagine this whole slab, okay, everywhere in this region of space that has some thickness to it, moving to the right with some particular speed, okay? We're going to try plugging this into each of these four equations and seeing what we get, okay? So we already know that if we don't have any electric and magnetic fields around, then the charge everywhere is going to be equal to zero. And there are no currents around. I is equal to zero. Okay. So let's start by plugging this region of field into Gauss's law, into the first of these four Maxwell's equations. And so here's a question. Here's our region of non-zero electric field. Okay. It's everywhere pointing in the positive y direction. And I imagine a box that is inside this region of electric field, okay? And of course, n hat is always pointing toward the exterior and is perpendicular to the surfaces of the box. What's inside the box? Okay, well, Let's see, we have most of us saying zero net charge, but we just got done taking a test where Gauss's law was one of the topics. So let's see if we can apply what we know about Gauss's law to this, to this situation. I'm imagining, okay, I'm imagining a box now, and maybe this isn't quite clear, but the electric field is extending essentially infinitely high and low in this slab, okay? So I'm, I'm just picking some box that's inside this slab. And so I'm going to be measuring the electric field on this top surface, the electric field on the bottom surface, and the electric field on the sides. It's the same electric field everywhere over that surface. Okay. So what am I going to get? Let's look at the, the flux on each side. Okay. On the top, am I going to get a positive or a negative or zero flux? Positive. On the front, what am I going to get? Zero. On the back, uh, left and right, what am I getting in on the bottom? Negative, okay? And what do you know about if the magnitude of E is the same and the area is the same, then the top and bottom flux magnitude should be same, okay? So when I add them up, I get zero, okay? So what's inside the box? Zero charge, okay? 
So let's, let's think about what happens, what this is telling us. We said there are no charges around, so that's got to be zero. I just applied Gauss's law to e to this closed box, and I end up with zero. I get zero is equal to zero. I say, okay, this pattern of fields satisfies Gauss's law. At least according to Gauss's law, this is possible. Okay? So that's done. Okay, we checked one off the list. We're going to go on to the next one. Okay? This wasn't meant to be that difficult. Is everybody okay with this? Got it? Okay. Well, the next one is... Gauss's law for magnetism, and I don't think we even have to poll for this one, right? What's inside the box? Nothing, right? The, the net magnetic flux has to give you what? Zero over a closed surface. On the front, you get a what sign of flux? Positive, right? Because the magnetic field is pointing out towards us. On the back, it's negative. Everywhere else, it's zero, okay? And so, no, in fact, no matter what pattern of field we have for magnetic fields, we've got to get zero. And fortunately, we do. So we get zero equal to zero for uh, magnetic flux. Gauss's law for magnetism is checked off. Okay? So, so far, so good.